Okay, so this video we're going to deal with ellipses from chapter 9. Um, and this will be the first part of this handout only. So before I jump into how to graph this equation right there, that ellipse, uh, what I want to do is review this idea over here. How do I get from a parent x squared to this new function 2 and then the x turns into x minus 3 squared plus 4. And so you might remember the 2 is a vertical stretch. And then the minus 3 means we go 3 to the right, and the plus 4 means we go 4 up. Okay, but what's going to happen is we're going to see these shifts and stretches done differently. So if you look at the one on the left here, or sorry, the right, this one, and I say, how do you get from y equals x squared to y minus 4 over 2 equals x minus 3 squared? The minus 3 does the same thing. That's still going to be right 3 units. But if you notice, the y stuff is now attached to the y. It's all on the same side as the y instead of on the opposite side. So really, if you think about what these numbers do, well, if I multiply both sides by 2, I get y minus 4 equals 2 x minus 3 squared. And then if I add the 4 over, I get this. So that's the same exact equation. So really, this thing right here, when the y minus 4, when the, when the negative 4 is attached to the y instead of on the other side over here, well, that's, that actually means 4 units up. And when I'm dividing the y term by 2, instead of having the 2 multiplied on the other side, that's still a vertical stretch by 2. And then the 3 is still 3 to the right. And the key here is that we're always going to do our stretches before we do the sliding left, right, up, down. Okay? So if I give you something that looks like this, how do I go from, you know, what happens if I have some equation with a y in it, and then that turns into an equation where the y got replaced with like y minus 1 over 5? Then really what that means you know, if I had this equal something, the 5 would be multiplied over to the other side. So that's a vertical stretch by 5. And then the minus 1, well, if it was on the other side, it would be a plus 1. That would mean up 1. So you kind of have to train your brain to think about the stretches and shifts that way now. Okay, so let's go back to this and keeping that in mind. So the first question says... How do, you get, how do you start with a basic circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1? So that one has center 0, 0, and radius equals 1. And get this graph, get this equation, right? What do you have to do to the circle? Well, so let me just write it here. x squared plus y squared equals 1. And then we're going to turn the x squared... Actually, let me do this in steps. First, we'll do the division. x over 2 squared plus y over 6 squared equals 1. Well, if I could multiply the 6 over, that would be a vertical stretch by 6. And then in a similar way, the x over 2, that's going to be a horizontal stretch of 2. And then if you look at the equation, well, I've shifted this around. The circles, the, the original circle wouldn't be centered at 0, 0. It would be centered at 4, 3. So when I do this x minus 4 over 2 squared plus y minus 3 over 6 squared. Well, the stretches stay the same, but now I've gone 4 to the right and 3 up. Or you could think of it as center point is 4 comma 3. Most people are probably going to want to jump straight to the center point. Right? So basically you're going to start at the center 4, 3. And then instead of going up, down, up 1 and down 1, you're going to go up 6 and down 6 because that's the vertical stretch. And you're going to go left 2 and right 2. And then this would be the ellipse if you were to graph the whole thing. And you could figure out what these points are pretty easily. Okay. So, in fact, here's the ellipse right here. Right? So let me recopy this equation here. x minus 4 over 2 squared plus y minus 3 over 6 squared equals 1. So then the question is, how do those numbers relate to the graph? Well, the center point, the center 
is four comma three, right? So let's come over four and up three. There's the center point right there. Center equals four, three. Let me add uh, this. Four, three, center. The two right there means we're, we stretched out the ellipse two units, the original circle by two. So it's two units this way, two units that way. And then the six, uh, I'll do gray for the six. The six right here is the vertical stretch, so it's six units up. Six units up, six units down. Okay, and then there's some terminology that we need to learn. So there's this thing called the major axis. That's whichever axis is longer. So in this case, it's from top to bottom. So this right here is called our major axis. And in this case, the major axis is 12 units long. So I'll just say equals 12. And by the way, whichever one's the longer axis, we call each six here the letter A. So the major axis always equals two A units. And in this case, that's 12. So I'm just gonna say, so A equals six, right? Oops, forgot to write the center point here, four, three. The two was the horizontal stretch. The six was the vertical stretch. Okay, so let's move down a little bit. The minor axis, well, that's the other axis. So that's the one going this way, right here. And so the minor axis, whoops, minor axis. Well, if the major axis, each half of it gets called A, you can probably guess that each half of the minor axis is called B. So the minor axis always equals 2B. And in this case, that's four units. So B equals uh, two. Uh, the vertices, okay, well, the vertices are just, so the vertices are the ones that are on the extreme end. So they're the ends of the major axis. So here's a vertex, here's a vertex. And then the covertices are the ones that are closer together. So this would be a covertex and a covertex. Uh, and then the center point we already have labeled. So, okay. So uh, the distance between the covertices, distance between the covertices is always equal to 2b. The distance between the vertices is always equal to 2a. Okay. And the major axis, that equals 2a units, and the minor axis equals 2b units. So for the length. Okay. All right, so let's look at two. Graph the ellipse given by this equation. But notice the equation's not in the same form that we've been writing stuff in because there's a four in front and a nine in front. <laughs> you might hear kids in the background here. <laughs> All right, so let me see here. All right, sorry, I had to pause it for a second because a large pack of children just walked by. <laughs> anyway, so we've got this equation here. And uh, the coefficients are the issue here because we haven't done anything with coefficients. And for ellipses, we typically want it to equal one, not 36. So what we'll do is we'll divide everything by 36. So if I do that, let me rewrite the original. Thirty-six. So if I divide everything by 36, then over here we get x minus one squared and then four over 36 is nine. A uh, nine on the bottom, plus, and then I've got y plus two squared, and then nine over 36 is the same as a four on the bottom, equals one. And then this is a little bit closer, but typically we want one big parenthesis squared plus another big parenthesis squared equals one. So if I, if I put the nine inside the parentheses, it becomes three. And over here, the four would become a two because then I square it and get the four back. Okay, so this one, the center point, is going to be add 1, negative 2 because of the x minus 1 and the y plus 2. And then I've got a horizontal stretch of 3 and a vertical stretch of 2. 
So let's graph that. So the center point's 1, negative 2, so right here. And then I've got to go 3 units to the right, so 1, 2, 3, which puts this point at 4, negative 2. And i got to go 3 units to the left, 1, 2, 3, so that'll be negative 2 to negative 2. And then i got to go 2 units up, so that puts me right here at uh, 1, 0, and 2 units down, which puts me at 1, negative 4. And then I just want to try and make that ellipse shape right here. I think the kids are coming back around. Okay. So uh, the top and bottom, notice these, the top and bottom points are close together. So these are the covertices. And these are the vertices. So there's one vertex, here's the other vertex. I'm going to pause. All right, so I paused for a second. I have no idea where we are in the problem. We've graphed everything. Um, let's see, we have the center point. We need the, we've got the vertices, we've got the covertices. How long is the major axis? Well, in this case, the major axis is horizontal as opposed to the previous example where the long axis was the up and down one. So this axis, let's see, it goes from negative two to positive four. So the major axis is gonna be six units long. And the minor axis is going to be from 0 to negative 4. So minor axis is 4 units long. And then it doesn't ask for this, but just, just for practice. Remember, the minor axis is 2B. B is this short distance right here then. So B is going to be 2. And A is going to be 3. Right, because the major axis is 2A and the minor axis is 2B. And the reason that I keep pointing out A and B is this is going to come in handy for our next lesson anyway. So, okay. All right. Uh, write the equation of the ellipse with a vertex at 3, 1 and a co-vertex at 5, 0. So really, you get two possible ellipses here. You get this one, but then 3, 1 would be a co-vertex, right? And we want it to be a vertex. So it's got to be the one that goes like this right here. So let's figure out the center point. So the center point is going to be at 5 comma 1. Uh, the stretch vertically was a one unit stretch and the stretch horizontally is a two unit stretch. So horizontal stretch is 2, vertical stretch is 1, and center is 5 1. So if we plug it back into our standard form, the center is 5, 1, so that'd be x minus 5 squared plus y minus 1 squared. And then we stretched it horizontally by 2, and we stretched it vertically by 1. And then we're stretching the most basic parent circle, which is x squared plus y squared equals 1. So this is our equation, and then we can clean it up a little bit, x minus 5 over 2 squared. Plus, and then the divided by 1, I can just get rid of that. So it's just y minus 1 squared equals 1. So there's our equation. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at 4. So 4, graph this ellipse, but notice there's a 4 and a 25 in front, and it doesn't equal 1, it equals 100. So I'll divide everything by 100. And so this turns into x plus 2 squared over 25 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. And then if I turn these into large parentheses squared equals 1, this is going to be x plus 2 over 5 and y over 2. And you can think of it as y minus 0 if you want to. So the center is going to be at negative 2, 0. The horizontal stretch is going to be 5, and the vertical stretch is going to be 2. Okay, so negative 2, 0 centered right there. And then I've got to go 5 units each direction, so I end up at 3, 0. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's negative 7, 0. And notice those, the stretch of 5 is bigger than the stretch of 2. So these are going to be vertices, not co-vertices. Oh, vertex, sorry for singular. Vertex. Vertex. 
And then the co-vertices, I'm going to go up two, one, two, and down two. So this will be negative two, two, and negative two, negative two. And then I'll connect them to make my ellipse. And remember, this is a co-vertex and the co-vertex. And then this is the center. And even though it doesn't ask it, uh, the major axis goes this length, and that's really 5 plus 5, so that's 10. So major axis equals 10, which is 2a, so if I asked what a was, it would be 5. And then the minor axis is the 2 here plus the 2 here, so that's 4. And remember that equals 2b, so each, each 2 is b. So B equals 2, and A equals 5. Okay. Uh, we'll do 5, and then we'll stop there for this video. So 5, we've got the vertices, we've got the co-vertices. So here's the ellipse right here. So really, to, to write the equation, we need the center point, and we need the stretches. And then we're going to fill it into this thing. So the center point, let's see here. Center point would be along x equals 1 and y equals 1. So that's convenient. x minus 1, y minus 1. And then the stretch horizontally is just one unit each direction. So that'd be over 1. And then in the y direction, let's see, what is this? Up 2 and down 2. So over 2. And then there's the equation, but if we clean it up a little bit, minus 1 over 2, all squared equals 1. Okay, and there we go. Now again, uh, in this case, this is the major axis. Major axis equals 4 units, which is the same as 2a. Notice a now goes up and down instead of left and right. So a would be 2. And then over here, the minor axis equals 2b, and that's 2 units, so b is 1. And really, the A and the B are always the horizontal and vertical stretches. It's just that A is always whichever one's bigger. Okay. All right, and we'll stop there.